Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk a little, a little bit about, well, a lot about Mopsy. So Mopsy is um, an application, it's a mobile application that um, we have built here at the uh, University of Eastern Finland. It started to be built, if I remember right, in 2008. So already 10 years of building it. And um, it is almost comparable to a commercial application in the sense that it's aimed at users, but um, it has a lot of uh, research uh, in it, and um, it's also um, working as a research project where new ideas are implemented all the time, and we check if they really work in practice or not, and uh, also to see if they are user-friendly or not, these, these kind of uh, ideas. So, application is very simple uh, interface for the mobile phone. It looks like this. Um, it has six major buttons. This camera, tracking, guide, friends. The profile um, button is on the left. Settings. And then at the bottom it's uh, something about uh, recent activities that, that people are doing. And this is the Android version. I have to say that the Android version is not extremely good. But um, it is working on, on most of the devices, and, and you can try it out by yourself by uh, loading it on uh, the Google Play Store. Or um, if you have iPhone, then get that one from the Apple Store. If you have Windows Phone, um, you can get that from the marketplace. And if you have, by any chance, Symbian device, then you can get that also from our website. Just, uh, <laughs> just to let you know. Because project started in 2008, there were no uh, Android iPhones uh, popular back, back then. So, <coughs> I'm logged in here. I will show the login process uh, later. And I will navigate now to my profile. And it shows that I have several routes here and, and photos on the top. And it shows my current location on the map, which is the science part here. Going back to the main screen, what I, I want to demonstrate from here is the photo taking. So if I go to the camera, then well, it, it looks like this. It's a real life feed from the camera. And I can use it to take some photo. And after that, this actually has been some request from uh, from um, some company before. I think it was uh, I think it was Keypro company. They wanted to have this kind of tool where um, you have the uh, location of the photo, but also the angle uh, shown. And if the angle is not correct, then you can you can modify the angle by by pressing the map to show this uh, this red line, so the direction at which you are you are pointing your your mobile phone. And uh, of course, there you have the possibility to to add some description for the phone for the photo, uh, upload it, and take another picture. So I'm going to try uploading it now asks me something about publishing to Facebook. I'm going to say no, but it um, doesn't really work anyway, because uh, the people that were working with the Facebook API stopped doing that uh, two years ago. And we, meanwhile, Facebook changed its API twice. So uh, not just once, but twice. So it's not compatible anymore. And we would need help to get it, uh, to get it done. But anyway, that's all that I want to demonstrate from this uh, from this thing. Maybe I go also to this guide screen and, and see what it is doing. It uh, gives me some recommendation uh, option on the left, or I can search for a keyword. So I can enter what I want to search for. Uh, and I can see also some bus options uh, nearby. Um, 
I think I'm going to close now this phone and continue to use emulator because in the rest of the demo I want to appear at some other location. So I, I don't want to um, be at Science Park all the time during this presentation. So I, yeah. Uh, what will happen uh, when you upload the picture? I will show. Uh, so, upload I think is successful already. It says here this. Uh, it said here in this. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it, the server detected already that I took a photo. It also detected that me and Himat met. So, Himat is there. Hello. <laughs> So I didn't expect that, and uh, also many, some other other things Pasi is doing now, also taking pictures. So I will show later on the web page how the photo ended up and uh, these things. Mm -hmm. So after you take it, it gets uploaded to our to our server. Okay, but meanwhile I'm going to keep this phone running, just so that I appear online, even though uh, I'm not using it. <laughs> so what I wanted to show now is um, I'm closing this uh, screen for my phone, but um, I'm still going to open the app one more time in my emulator so that I can have a different different location there and. We have some automatic login feature here. So there is this um, user Z who is now lo logged in. I can log him out, but uh, because I tested before with the user, he still appears to be logged in. And the location is somewhere uh, far away. I think uh, I think USA uh, somewhere. But I'm going to change his location to be be now Lansica to Joensu, the map, because I, I played with it, it's not showing me the, the place, but this button here uh, toggles back to the user's location. So now this user Z is at Science Park, and I'm go just going to demonstrate uh, the tracking feature. So it's very similar to what we did with the Super Tracker app. Uh, previous weeks, it's not too different. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it by, again I, I loaded some some trajectory uh, that goes from this Kreislakatu place and it should go all the way to Science Park. Mm, let's see if it begins to do that. Oh yeah, for, okay. So I'm just going to start tracking and see how that goes. And uh, we will leave now also this application on the background. So now we have one application on my desk with uh, user Radu that is logged in. And this user Z here is tracking at the same time. So I want to uh, next move to the web application and see there what is happening and how the users interact and, and so on. So I just wanted to give you some uh, real demo of how this is, is working. All right, so leaving that one now for the moment, but it is doing something in the background. And uh, here, the statistics are changing in, in real time. So this is something we didn't do in the in our tracking app. Our distance and time and uh, speed are calculated as we are uh, as we are tracking. So you don't have to wait for the end to get statistics. You get them while you are while you are tracking. Okay. So, web page. This is the web page. It's csuef.fi slash mopsy. And here I'm getting a list of users in this first app. Passy seems to be online. He's somewhere in, in China doing something. Uh, I'm online. I'm at Science Park. 
and it says here plus four others. So this is some clustering component. We don't show all the, the people at this location because it's going to be overlapping and not easy to read. So this is one of the first features that we have on the web. Uh, the four others you might see if you click on this, this marker. Uh, or maybe not. Oh, what has happened there? Move to Kazakhstan. Let's try to refresh the page. <laughs> so this is a... Uh, let's try it again. So I'm clicking now this one here. Okay. And now Joensu is here. Now it says Himat plus four others, but I'm also also online. Himat was uh, on the top there. Okay, so now it seems to work. So there are other people here that are, that are nearby, but um, the text is not uh, overlapping and it, it still is possible to, to read them. Uh, now, on the right here, you see either uh, one or two or three things. You either see the location, the address where the person is, or if they have a collection, then you're going to see what photos or what routes they have recorded. So if they don't have a collection, this is just the basic information that we still know about them because it's a location-based application and we know where they are. Uh, however, if they are active recently, then they will have these kind of actions on the right. For instance, uh, where the person is, so now it says that me and him are at this uh, low Nasravintola low here, because the, I think the restaurant is, uh, is somewhere here in the, yeah, this uh, low here, Ravintola, and we have it in, in the um, Mopsi uh, database, so it figured out that we are here for too long, maybe we are eating something, but it's wrong, so, yeah. And also the photos and um, meetings. Meetings are also here happening. So different actions like visiting a place or um, taking, uploading a photo uh, and meeting people is something that we detect uh, automatically on the server as we get, get data. Now, you might ask, where is this user Z that is tracking from home to work? I mean, from my home. He's not here. This is Kaislakatu where he started, and he should should be going, but he's not here. And the reason is that he, he is a test user. He is not a real user. We have a set of test users in the system, and this is quite useful because you don't want to uh, have fake information at the same time as real information. You want to label some users where you use emulator, for instance, because then you stop having real data into your system. You won't have any more real data sets. You will have a combination of real and fake, and then you need some kind of manual work to get it, um, to get it um, clean. So very useful to have these test users in the system. And I will show you now the login feature on the web. So, not too, not too fancy, but now when I go to my profile page, um, I have a possibility to modify some settings. Oh, and by the way, this is the picture we I took before, so it's, it's showing that. So it's possible to modify the settings to show the test users. So uh, this is something we usually hide, but uh, it's possible to, to, to change it there. And once I save it, I should be able to go back to, to the main page. And hopefully, yeah, I can see this test user there uh, also on the map. So we have to test sometimes many many functionalities and we make users jump from different places using emulator and we don't want that to interfere with the real users in the system so having this kind of test users is something i recommend anytime you work with any kind of application okay good 
Now, if we stay here on the map a little bit while user Z is tracking, actually I will stop user Z for, from tracking so that we can see a route. I don't want him to uh, track forever because the uh, lecture will end and, and we don't have a route then. So I stopped him from, from tracking. We will analyze a bit later. So four active users, they are red because they are online or uh, recently active. And then the more you go down, the more uh, further in time. So Oily was active, I think, four hours ago. And then all these other people, Mahari was active two days ago. And here we have maybe 16 days ago. So really the most active users are a handful of people. We don't have a, a bunch of them. There was one point when we had maybe 15, 20 active users uh, every day, but uh, not after the Facebook stopped working and, and the, these kind of uh, small problems appeared meanwhile. Right, so let's see now this Z user. Um, I'm going to open his root collection and I have some route here that was recorded quickly from 2.24 until 2.31 so this was the time while the user was tracking here on this other computer and you can see that it already I mean Mopsy already has the route and he also it also figured out the movement type that it is a walking a walking route and um, it is possible to have these, this segmentation happening here. So uh, you, this is just showing one segment, but uh, you may show uh, more segments and the speed may be different uh, in the different segments. This is also where we, we can show if the route has any stops or uh, if the transportation mode is, is changing at any point. But this one seems to be just, just walking. Okay. Let's see a bit more of, of the functionalities here. So there is this similarity search. So this one is able to find uh, other routes in the database that are um, similar in some way to our, our input. So for example, it found this blue root on the background, which is very similar to this, uh, to this green one that we just recorded. And again, this is uh, also instant, instantly processing. As soon as you get the root, you will, you will be able to calculate these similarities in, in, uh, in real time, basically. And you will find out who else has done the, the similar routes and their movement type is also shown there and the date is also, is also visible. So this list is very extensive, it's very very long. It starts with the best matches, like in this case, and ends with, with routes that are very little similar to this one. So in this case only slightly intersecting this, this uh, buses. This looks like a running route. So, yeah, but for the ones that are similar, like uh, more similar, like here, it is possible to get, um, to get this kind of uh, statistics on the common segment. So, for example, here I can compare uh, the speed on one, on one segment, our current, currently recorded route, with this uh, blue one. So, this situation, um, this other route was much faster because it was a, also because it was a cycling route. So this kind of comparison tool is, is also available in, uh, in Mopsy. And then there are a few other things here. Um, I think this stops is not going to work because I was just walking, I was not stopping for anything on this path. And some uh, root processing it is possible to do here 
but um, quite tedious tools, so not, not very useful. It is possible to move some points around or, uh, or delete some points, but then it will not appear as a real root anymore. If I save it, it's going to make a copy and it's going to say that this is a fake root, it's not a real, uh, real values. Real collected values, and this is also the place where you can download the root as a GPX or some uh, or text format. Um, if you want, for example, to upload it in some other application like uh, Sports Tracker or Strava or anything that can handle this kind of GPS data. Okay, and many other features are here. Uh, some more useful than others. This one doesn't seem to work. I'm going to try it again. So there is this small dog that is walking on the, on the path. <laughs> well, Sports Tracker doesn't have that, so... <laughs> um, it's kind of similar to the, the way we, we did with uh, Superman in that other application, but here the picture is an animated GIF, or GIF, or how you want to call it. Uh, but the rotation is not as as, uh, as good as in the other, so it's just either pointing to the left or pointing to the right. So quite simple feature, but uh, somehow funny. Right. Now, let's go to the photos, and maybe I can use my photos as, uh, as an example. Yeah, one yeah. moment. Yes. Uh, you in your picture, you look like a Mr. Big uh, from the Sex and City series. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, don't you have uh, ever seen the uh, Sex and City uh, television series? Uh, I know what it is, but I haven't seen it, no. There is the Mr. Big, and he, he, he spoke like that. And this was uh, that kind of uh, appreciation. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Do I need to change it? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, what about that? How, how uh, often do you record, record that uh, position yeah. when you enter it? Yeah, so the mobile app has a setting. Um, usually we set it to four, every four seconds on default. But you can put it to two seconds or eight seconds or uh, anything in the, in the settings page. So default is four seconds, every four seconds. OK. Um, and yeah, I forgot to mention, but uh, I couldn't because uh, in, that, in that one trajectory, it was so boring that I, I was showing. I should show something more interesting here, maybe. So these are the, my last week trajectories we have we the routes we have we we have this possibility to select them by by year or uh, month or week or select actual dates um, and two viewing modes you you can view it on the map and you can also view it in this list on the left with the extension that if you click this thing which is actually a button knows you can see also the, the roots on this uh, thumbnail view so a little bit problem with the interface if you don't know that this is actually a, a feature unless you work for Mopsy basically um, yeah and the, the list is sorted in this um, recency so it's depending on the date and of course the list will be bigger if um, I load more data, and if multiple routes are recorded on the same date, then uh, they are grouped under this date, date field there. Okay, so I mentioned briefly some, some time ago, uh, it is not easy to display such a such, uh, large amount of data. So showing all this data on the map if you try to download all these routes, okay, and you 
open the, take the GPX and you put it on the Google map, Google map will crash. So we are doing something here that allows you to, to show all these different, uh, different points. Uh, first of all, relatively quickly, so it doesn't take too long, but also it doesn't crash the map. So if you would display all the points, um, it would be too much, the Google map will, will start to hang. So how are we doing this? It is a, a combination that we, we don't show the points that are outside of the screen. So, for example, now the points in Yoensu, they are not there on the map anymore. We only show the ones that are, um, that are in the screen or around the screen to allow for this kind of uh, scrolling, scrolling move. Um, and then, when we are zoomed out this much, even though this, this one route here has many points, probably 5,000 points, if I would, I would have to guess, in practice here we are showing very few points. We are maybe showing uh, 20 or 30 points. So there is this tool here. There is this tool here that shows this, this uh, a little bit. Um, the route on the background, the black one, it has 556 points, somewhere in Helsinki, and the red route, it has only 13 points. So this, this red line, this is called polygonal approximation. We approximate the route uh, by something that has far less points but preserves the shape. And if I zoom out here, you will see that at some point it doesn't look too different from the original one. So depending on the zoom level that you are using, we are going to use a bit more points to represent it. So now I'm using 25 points, it still looks quite similar to the original one. So it's a combination of these two techniques, not showing the, the parts that are not on the map, and also decreasing the number of points. So only when I, when I zoom in on this segment, it will start to become a bit, more, a bit more detailed. It's actually hard to see, but that's the point, to, to, to have it um, seamless, seamless uh, working. Right, and if you want to know how it's done, it's a research project, so we have here on the machine learning uh, page, we have the publications. And if you will look for... a fast Ordo N multi-resolution polygonal approximation algorithm for GPS trajectory simplification, you will get uh, all the details about how this method works. It has been done quite a while ago, uh, 2012, but anyway, that is there. Um, if you are interested to know how the segmentation... Um, how the segmentation and the movement type detection works, then this is another one. Uh, it, has, it is detecting the movement type by root segmentation and classification. So you, you can find PDF for, for all of these things on the, on the web page. And uh, of course this is scientific paper, but uh, we try to make it as, as um, easy to, to understand as possible. So we have different movement types and um, different probabilities for each of them to, to happen. It depends on the speed very much, but it also depends on feasibility. So it's quite unlikely that you will drive a bike and then go on a car, and then back on a bike, and then back on a car. It's more likely that the car is going slow for some reason. So also a combination of um, uh, what is the speed, but also is it likely that 
this is really happening in practice. So not, and it's not a very simple method, but um, we have some solution for, for that. Okay, now, photos. So photos is the recent one there. Same selection with the month. I wasn't very active in, in Mopsy in the last month. So still one photo. Uh, but last year I have something. And you will notice the same kind of clustering component on the map. So this is again, many photos here are at the same location. I'm just going to keep one of them uh, as the representative and avoid having many overlapping ones overlapping ones there. This clustering component is actually part of, um, of uh, a dissertation. So this is part of, um, of the dissertation of uh, Mohammed. So this guy from here, he worked with clustering. And part of this, this thesis has is focusing on exactly on this um, clustering of uh, a photo targets on the map. But uh, let's see if I can find it somehow. Mm -hmm. Be a bit tricky because. Uh, PhD thesis has four papers that are, are included in it, so um, and has many pages. So might might take a little time to, to find what I'm looking for, but okay, yeah, it's probably somewhere here. Um, yeah, so he uses some grid on the map, and then. Uh, somehow a distance between the thumbnails, but it also takes the thumbnail size into, into account. I'm not going to look for this anymore, but uh, it's somewhere, uh, anyway, if you ever need, need something like this. And we consider it much more superior than the one that Google offers. So Google has also a component for clustering things on the map, but uh, there are some situations where the clustering just doesn't doesn't give the needed information the way you expect it. And um, yeah, we try to use this one as, as much as possible. And it's the same component as before. If you click on this eight photos cluster, it's going to zoom in and show those uh, eight components. And again, may need to zoom in more if necessary. Or uh, in this case, they are exactly at the same location. So I'm going to open this kind of uh, slideshow you there. Functionalities for rating there and Facebook publication which doesn't work anymore uh, and I can delete the photo because it belongs to me. So, uh, it's, yeah. Okay, now this might look a little bit uh, simple and, and um, you might not see the point of the clustering but if I select all the photos then you cannot also load all of them or display all of them at the same time. So the same problem with the photo points, uh, with the root points, is going to happen with the photos. The photo information is just going to be too much to, to load. It would take too long time. And that's why we keep only a few representatives here instead of downloading all 54. So more of them are loaded when you zoom in to that 54 uh, cluster. And we are able to do even more than that. We, we could, for example, with this system, load all of the photos in Mopsy, which are quite many. So time for the loading is, is increasing quite a lot, even with this, with this clustering. But uh, the map is still able to display all of them because it's not going to have uh, mm, it's going to keep only representatives at, at the different locations. So, yeah, this is still a problem with uh, downloading the size of the data, but uh, it should work. Any questions about what we have so far?
Are all of these features available on mobile as well? No. So the question was, are these features available on mobile? Uh, they are not. So mobile has limited interface because um, we didn't have e enough people working on the software. So the only mobile that, that uh, supports clustering of photos is the Windows Phone, which nobody uses anymore. <laughs> and uh, I think that the Windows Phone has the most advanced features. Uh, I made it, <laughs> but it's not the reason. It's, uh, the, the reason is that at that point I was only focusing on that while the other developers were, uh, were focusing on, on other features, so um, on, on research and, and other tasks. So we had ded dedicated developer just for one platform, but the other ones were somehow left behind. So it's, it's very difficult to manage such a system with limited resources and making it available for many platforms at the same time. It's just not realistic in a <coughs> university environment. You would need this to be taken by some company. Or, yeah. So the drawback with the number of features, but uh, yeah, so it is loaded with uh, 55 thousand photos uh, which look like this or like on where I'm going to zoom in if the number is above 100 then it's going to, to show this asterisk sign because there are just too many and you don't want to, to use such a big uh, big number filling up the, the screen some problems here with the thumbnail generation I think yeah, many things happen when <laughs> when you're working on, on such a big big system or big database. But after the data is loading, um, the interface is, is manageable. So even though we are scrolling through a, a large photo collection, uh, it's not lagging too much. And a time-based clustering is also happening on the top here. So the same data is represented in different groups. Uh, structured by the, the time component. So here, if you want to see the photos in, in this period, if you click on that, it's going to open uh, more, uh, more groups from that period and, and so on. So but basically, we are doing two clusterings uh, at the same time of photos. So clustering is quite, kind of a, a big deal in Mopsy. So able to access the photo via the photo collection via time or via location uh, on the map, and give also a, a useful interface like that doesn't doesn't break the map or the browser. This is what we have done here. How many users you have nowadays? <laughs> well, total users I think we have maybe five thousand, but active users. They are here and they contain Z, who is a test user. So, uh, not many users anymore. I think we have maybe five active users that you are, expect them to get new information from them every day. So, we are still getting information, but uh, not, not many people are using it. But the data has accumulated over the years, so you can imagine new students coming, uh, new people working on the system, they started to use Mopsy and so on. So you do find some users here, maybe Andre is one example, I think his photo collection is 2000 something. Uh, root collection also, I think, pretty big, but he stopped working on, on Mopsy maybe a year, a bit over a year ago, so 2016, but you can see he tracked quite a lot, and, um, and his collection is quite big, even though he's not any more active, so we can use these kind of collections in, uh, in our research, which is quite useful, because uh, 
it's hard to get real data from people that you know and from people that can describe their data. Sometimes you, you, you want to know what are their patterns, are the results meaningful or not, so then you can get an understanding of, of how they are moving and what they are doing from the actual person. And you can add that description into the data set. Uh, when uh, new regulations come, uh, uh, do you have to do any changes to our database? Um, changes we, we do, I think uh, they, they are planned to, to do them on the privacy policy. So we have some kind of privacy policy somewhere. Um, essentially the privacy says that uh, we store the passwords securely and that the location is uh, you collect it with your own risk. I mean the application by default is public and people that are seeing, uh, if you are using Mopsy then people will see where you are. So because the, the uh, password encryption is is there i don't think we need to make many changes um, it's more a problem that we will lose more people because our private private functions in mopsy are not very developed uh, for example if i go here to this um, um, to these settings um, I can choose to become visible only to my Facebook friends or to selected users and if I do this one then only whoever I type there is going to see my information but um, this is not happening by default so I mean by, by default if we would put here a private account then that would somehow uh, remove the usefulness of the application but it would also deal uh, easier with these kind of regulations and, and problems. So then we wouldn't have to say that the location is, is public anymore. Uh, but I don't think I don't think we need to do any changes. It's just uh, making it clear that uh, what is going to be shared with others. Good. But uh, I have to check again because. There might be some small small functionalities that uh, you wouldn't expect uh, there. And they need some clarification. Yeah, so we have, I would say, maybe 50 users, 51 users, who have reasonable amount of data, but they are not active users anymore. So their past history is, is useful for research, and it also is useful for MOPSI because you see that it is able to handle a large root collection, for example, or a large photo collection. It's not just a um, theoretical result. It's, it's, a, it's in practice, like this is real data and uh, it's, it's not fake, artificial or, or anything like that. Yeah, okay. And Yeah, and the routes, uh, so this is, these are the ways that you can search for them. You have the time-based search here, time component, and a list component, and also the map component. So I explained a little bit about how we can show many of them on, on the map and not have the browser cra uh, crashing. Uh, but this is not the only way to, to search for routes in Mopsy. So one of the most recent things is uh, how to search them by shape. And this is this uh, one thing that I have been using in, in sometimes, is that if you hold down the control key, then you have this option to draw, to draw a, a, a given shape in Mopsy. So for example, if you draw something that looks like, like that, uh, 
you are going to expect to find to to have Mopsy search for things that are looking like this line uh, that I'm drawing on the map, and it is finding quite many of these 40 kilometer uh, tracks, and most of them are, are looking the same. Uh, it is one of the more, more unique features compared to other systems because uh, usually they only offer this um, list or calendar based based time time queries and um, except for Strava who has also now something uh, well maybe a year ago they implemented this segments feature so you can find out on one specific segment who else has been cycling or running or um, doing something uh, there and then you can compare to see how how you stand like uh, are they faster than you or slower than you or, or so on so that is a bit more similar to this uh, space spatial uh, query that we have here yeah so i think that we can have a 10 minutes break and then we can continue with more more things that mopsy is doing yeah. Uh, do you have more questions about this, these things? So uh, there are so many things that we could talk about, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure what to focus on. Uh, was there another option that you just dropped in the map and then it finds the route? Yes. Oh wow! Wow! Oh. <laughs> yeah, very cool. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's. I think it's it's quite useful sometimes, but um, it depends about what you are trying to do in the in the system. Uh, since we are here and we, we were talking about this novel novelty of these routes, um, I would show a little bit about these map options here. So this is the Google map. This is the OpenStreetMap. It's better sometimes. So if you see this place here where I was showing before, um, Google Map is much more empty. So the OpenStreetMap has a little bit more detail about what is expected to be here, what kind of forest, and a little bit more of these, uh, of these paths uh, are there. So it seems like more or less options depending on the provider. Google has also the satellite view. Uh, some of the streets are, are visible there, but uh, some may not. For example, where Pasi has been running, it's not really a, a road. It's just an accessible region in the forest. So, yeah. We also have the option to leave it blank. Like, this is completely white. We don't have any, any map anymore. Um, this is just useful for research, so sometimes you want to take a picture that doesn't, isn't interfering with the other drawings on the map, so you want to say something about the trajectories and you don't want anything else to be in the way. But this is quite important, this CoR here. So I'm not sure if you are familiar with this Kalevan Rusty. But um, this orienteering uh, team here, and uh, they organize some orienteering <coughs> events in in Yoensu and, and surroundings, and they have well, they have calendar and maps and, and these things uh, available on this website, so you can go and and uh, try to play this game outdoors forest basically try to find the different places and we have taken their maps and we have added them to Mopsy where we could so they are extremely precise compared to, to uh, the Google map or the OpenStreetMap they are like orders of magnitude more precise if you try to look, uh, zoom in you will get information about the, ter the terrain, terrain type um, roads that wouldn't be visible on, on the other ones and sometimes even details like uh, I, I'm not sure but I think these things are rocks so um, 
these small dots there. I'm not sure I'm not the... Uh, yeah, they, they are big rocks. Yeah, at least I know that this dot here is big rock. I'm not sure, maybe this also. But, uh, but yeah, so they are very useful maps if you are going somewhere where Google or OpenStreetMap doesn't have information. And um, it's also possible sometimes to see and analyze a person's movement with respect to the context better. For example, let's see, people tend to follow these kind of elevation lines so that if they are in a race, they want to stay at the same elevation, not go uphill and downhill too much because it's too difficult. So it might, might give you an answer why the person chose that particular route in a place where Google Maps knows nothing about it. So, yeah, uh, Mopsy has a lot of these small functionalities that uh, could be useful, but uh, not so easy to use maybe, or they are not well advertised, because it's not a business. It's, it's more like, can we do it, implement it, write a paper, and so on. Yeah. Do you know, uh, is there that kind of uh, uh, particular uh, applications for the orienteering uh, from the other? No, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I think there is none from this Kalevan Rasti, but um, the orienteering is a traditional sport. You go there just with the compass and the paper map. So I, I think the use of GPS is not allowed, <laughs> so there, there wouldn't be any... Uh, target audience for, for making a specific orienteering app. It's just not, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I guess if you have a, that kind of registering system with you, uh, if you train the orienteering, uh -huh. it, it could be uh, nice to get the, that, that information. Ah, you mean after um, after the training to check where where do you miss the spots and that kind of stuff. Yes, okay. Actually, it's amazing that uh, if he, the friend is in orienteering man, he he, he had, hadn't marketed it for the orienteering and guys. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well. It's difficult, so um, the, the reasons why people don't do it are usability reasons. And they start with battery life. Okay. Also at the beginning is extra weight. Mm. All right. It might, cool. sound, it might sound silly, but the guys doing orienteering don't have pockets. Uh, they leave their keys in this box at the beginning. Yeah, the absolutely. Car. So they want to be as light and as dependent on technology as possible. And check this route. I, I'm not sure what Passi did, but here it seems he just went through the swamp. So, <laughs> so the phone, I don't know how it survived that. Yeah. Actually, uh, about the orienteering, when we uh, check the competition, uh, how, how they track the uh, competitions? in this orienteering matches? I don't know exactly. They have to be some kind of tracker. With yeah. Them. yeah, yeah. It might be something similar to what they use in marathon running. Okay. But uh, I don't think they use GPS, or maybe they use GPS for some uh, more important players. Or I don't know. Yeah. But you, I think you have a lot of documentation, so if you go on such web pages, they will tell how they do it. Yeah. Now they, you can get the, the road route in the real, 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 real time. Yeah. With the T. Yes. Yes. It's possible, uh, I think. I think they do use GPS for some players. Mm. Okay. But let's move on to some other, other things. I think enough about routes. I will talk m much more about how these systems work uh, when I'm in Kuopio. So uh, after two weeks, I will have a lecture about just about trajectories. So let's move on to some other things. Uh, bus. 
it was much more important earlier. <laughs> now it's, uh, it's not very useful. Um, I think I might need to refresh the page. Mopsy seems to have some problem. Uh, let's see. So this here, uh, another big reason why it's not very popular. <laughs> so it, it uh, sometimes crashes or gets stuck in, while doing something. So this bus application, uh, yeah. Okay. It has one input. The input is the user's location. And it should tell you what are the next buses that are going in very different directions. So um, if you see your destination somewhere on this list, then click it and you will, you will find out which bus you have to take. So it's kind of a simple, simple application. Uh, and it uses this, um, I think, yeah, Finland made this national uh, service for, for bus queries, so we have, have now moved to that. But in the past, we used to get uh, information from the city, and it was horrible. So I can just tell you that this was happening three years ago, and we were getting information in PDF format. So... <laughs> So you take the, the updates, like if the lines are different, you get them in PDF format. There was no other way of, of, um, of giving it. Um, and at that point, we had the, the only electronic system that, that was working, really. But um, it wasn't working that well, because sometimes the updates were not coming in time or uh, just very difficult to manage such a system when you're also doing other things. So Mopsy was not just focused on this bus, it tried to do it, but eventually now we are using this, uh, this openly available database. So it's not much for me to tell about it, just that you can use it and you sh should be able to use it on your mobile phone also. But this destination, setting a specific destination is not supported by the mobile at the moment. There is one student, uh, Golam, if you know him, he is trying to make this uh, feature on the mobile phone now as his IT project. So steadily, still getting more features in Mopsy, but not, not so much. Yeah. And finally, the search. So the search feature and this recommendation feature, they are one of the more interesting things that we did. So the recommendations feature, uh, also based on a paper, so based on uh, uh, the paper called Four Aspects of Relevance in Location-Based <coughs> Media, Content, Time, Location, and Network. Um, so you can read this one if you are interested in how it works. But uh, a small explanation is that you have your location, and if you are logged in, you have some past history of what services you have uh, liked or uh, rated or visited according to, to what Mopsy knows. And then it's going to try to predict in the area something similar that you like. It's going to rank uh, the different things in your area depending on how far they are, how likely it is for you to like it based on your history, the rating that, uh, that the, the services have in the database. So there are the, the different things. This is what we mean by, uh, by uh, network, I think, because it's made by the other users in the, in the system, <coughs> and the time. So time is also an important component because some services are only available in winter time or uh, summer time or, uh, or, um, yeah, or depending on, on maybe opening hours. Or, uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but uh, it is working and it's uh, giving some results. The problem is it's, um, 
local database, which we stopped updating for a while. <laughs> so if, if you have some new service in your answer, it will not be recommended because of that. So it's a little bit of a, of a problem. But you can try it. And uh, sometimes you can get also these kind of uh, pictures. So this is not a service, it's a photo that somebody took. And we thought it's a good idea to also show these if they are uh, remarkable somehow. So I, I think this one, I don't know why it is here. <laughs> uh, usually it's here if it gets uh, many thumbs up, but this one doesn't have any. There should be here some marking for that. It might be just that it's very close to the, to the location. Yeah, I don't know why I want to see that, but uh, anyway, some of the services may be useful. Like, I know that I like to go to, to the swimming pool sometimes, and uh, what else is here that I have? This is old service. This uh, restaurant is not there anymore. It's called something else. Remember, but uh, yeah, so this is an example of all database uh, causes a bit of problems sometimes, and it's valid that a lot. It's now it's K market, so uh, these are problems with the uh, database that would need to be maintained. And we have a system for maintaining them that is actually uh, available to people, so people that are logged in could go and edit the name of the service and. You would be surprised, but a lot of research goes in here. So it might may seem like what is there to do? It's a you enter another name if it has changed them, and that's it. But uh, really, um, a lot of research went here. For example, nearby photos is uh, is some function. I don't know if it works, but. Uh, yeah, it seems to work. So it finds photos that people have been taking in the area and that might represent this, this service. Um, it's also possible to add a link. So this link is a website. Uh, so this is the web page of this, of this service. Uh, and what Mopsy can do is, using this link, it could, for example, extract the keywords automatically from that web page. I don't know if it, uh, I haven't tried it in a while, but I'm going to try. So now it asks me, do I want to add these different keywords uh, here, assuming that I don't have anything there. So a way to automatically add these kind of services into this, uh, these kind of fields into the system this has been one paper that uh, uh, Nashla and Mohammad have been working on, and now I think Himat is, is trying to improve it. And the same is happening uh, for the photos. So from the web page, if I click this button, it's now going to try to find the photos that are on the web page and see if I can use any of those photos automatically into the system. In this case, I think the one that uh, Passi or whoever made this service took is a little better, a little more representative. Uh, address information is there. And the title also, uh, if you have the link, title might come also from that link. Uh, and now you might ask, what is so difficult about extracting title from the link? Because web pages have a title, right? And uh, and this title is is obviously Pizza Express and Cafe. And uh, what is so difficult about extracting that? Why do you need to write a research paper about that? But really, this is a picture. So. Do we want to do image processing to get the title in this case? Or how did we get this Pizza Express and Cafe was recommended by, by Mopsy, I think. Uh, right here. So it found its Pizza, pizza Express and Cafe. 
but the uh, question is how did it find it because this text doesn't look much more emphasized than any other one actually this looks much more like a title it's bigger it's in the center so uh, there yeah. are a few, a few more things we can add to, to this uh, research uh, this topic detection summarized web page what web page is telling us yeah, so Himat was talking about web page summarization. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is something to do with that. So um, I will try now to, to look at, the, to point out these papers that I was talking about in our publications list. So if you are interested in this kind of uh, research, I think. I think most of Najla's papers, so using li linguistic features to automatically extract a uh, web page title. So Najla is doing natural language processing here, and she's doing, um, she's doing first noun phrase extraction. So she thinks that titles are usually nouns. You are not very interested in uh, verbs or adjectives. Or, so she is using those kind of features, and then looking at the different components of the page that are matching these kind of, uh, these kind of uh, patterns and choosing based on that of course it's a paper uh, because it's a research paper it's not as simple as that but that's the basic uh, understanding of it you can read more there um, she has also some similarity measures for titles could be related but not very much uh, content based title extraction from web page so not anymore this natural language processing, but based on the content. Uh, keyword extraction for web pages. So if you if you search for, um, I think if you search for Gali there, then you will get um, all of these uh, papers that are related to web page processing and text processing in general. And also extracting representative image from the web page. This is the one where you, you work with the pictures from the web page. So, yeah, many, many different uh, topics are covered in Mopsy. And this is just the editing of a service tool that we wanted to have as simple for people to use. You don't want them to enter their text manually. You want them to automatically get something and then edit if needed. So the less work you have to you will give to people the more likely it is that people will do it if it's if the interface is helping you out so this is one one of the ideas that are going here so you would start to create a service or edit a service by just adding a link at the beginning and then at the different different uh, tabs you would extract from the link or even have that process happening uh, automatically after you enter the link, so yeah, and the same cl clustering component is is shown here as the photos. Uh, question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can add a few more uh, additional research related to that. Is the language independence? So this these words are only in English. Yeah. Um, there might be a few more languages that we can work if anybody is interested. In yeah, so this is a good point by Himat. So um, language is a problem. So these keywords, uh, we are in Finland. Most of these web pages have Finnish page by default. Uh, are we able to identify keywords in a page written in Finnish language? This is a, another problem. and. As far as I know, there is no language independent solution that works good. So each of them have to be fine tuned in, in the different languages. Of course, you can use translation services, get one in, in one particular language and then just translate, but uh, they don't work that great. Translation services seem to work with context very much. So if, if you have a sentence, it's going to try to understand the context of the se sentence and translate it entirely um, in, in another sentence based on this understanding of the sentence. But here we have specific independent words. You might have something like uh, um, coffee or, uh, or bakery or 
something like that. They don't really link to each other very much, but uh, you, you should be able to translate directly. And some of them are very specific, like this orienteering uh, related topic. Hard to get the exact definition elsewhere. Yeah, so ways to make it language independent. Some exist, but they don't work that, that great. Any other um, questions so far? Yeah. Yeah. Was it that way that uh, you got the uh, title and uh, the other information from the pictures of the uh, net page? No. 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 So, uh, okay. title, um, the way this method here works for extracting the title, it goes to the web page. And Okay, so you could get it from the picture. So this here is a picture. It looks like that. So it is there. Uh, but we don't do any image processing to get the title out. We, yeah. we look for these, um, for these um, syntactic patterns in the text. Like, are we looking at a text that is uh, that contains uh, verbs, uh, adjectives, or are we looking at nouns? And we, we select the ones that have nouns, and then we look at a little bit more uh, more information than that. So we might look if the text contained in the web page, like maybe maybe this text here, does it appear also in the URL link, for example? So if you if you find the same the same kind of uh, text in the page as the web page title, uh, it's an indication that this is the title that we are talking about. Uh, so we have more features for this, but we don't use any visual uh, any image processing. It, you could okay. you could, but the problem is it's time consuming. So if you go to some web page, download all the pictures there, and try to find text in the pictures, it will take a very long time. And we don't have fast, fast method of doing it yet, at least. Okay, let's go a little bit to profile page. I don't want. I don't know if I will have what to show here that is interesting, but uh, okay. So recent activity, what has been happening today, so here at, at the Science Park it detects these meetings all the time now because my phone is on. These multiple detections are happening because even though the phone is, is here and it's standing still, my apparent location changes very much because of, uh, of location inaccuracies. So my location might jump 100 meters somewhere else, and then it comes back here and meets Himat again. So, so this kind of uh, problems can can happen. Uh, at some point, we had even this group meeting when when Z user was uh, was also here. Uh, different photos. This is uh, some Omopsi uh, gameplay, but I will talk about that after three weeks, I think. Uh, changing the city, I guess, yeah, I was in Guapio on that, on that period for a very short visit. And past, past history of what has happening, been happening with my account. Um, some Lapland trip here. So all of these, they are detected automatically and uh, we don't have to enter anything there. So it's kind of keeping a diary for me about what I have been doing. Uh, and here, um, also possible to check uh, activity, like summary of activity. In my last month, I haven't been driving at all. But cycling which is false. So it says here that I have been cycling for 20 minutes. It's really not the case. It's probably thinking that I'm cycling on some faster skiing or, or whatever. Um, 
Yeah. So all these, uh, all my activity in the last week, in the last month, was uh, mostly skiing, and uh, walking and running may look like skiing. Sometimes cycling may look like skiing. So these are. Uh, uh, it's hard to say because we don't have the skiing movement type into the system. So it's going to be classified as either one or the other. And if I look at the annual. Um, the last year I drove 12.5 kilometers, but I think this is also something else. It might be very fast cycling, because uh, I rarely drive and, and do trekking. So here, cycling some, some distance, running and, and walking, so some statistics there. Yeah, okay, meetings that have happened in the past, so not too many. And visiting different places just here in Science Park and uh, surroundings, but in theory the, the page can show more, so. Yeah. And here we automatically detect my uh, workplace, my home and uh, my favorite place. I don't live here anymore. I rarely go here, <laughs> and I still work here. <laughs> so um, a bit old information, but um, yeah. Are you curious to know how how these works, or have I ever mentioned about how they? No. No. Did I? Okay. Do you want to know how they work? Yeah. Okay. So, they are places where you start tracking and stop tracking. So, very likely people stop and start at their home or the workplace or wherever they go, like a favorite place or a supermarket or, or something like that. Uh, so, you can find the top places where people end their, their tracking or begin their tracking. You cluster those and choose a location. But now the question is, how do I know that this is my work and this is not my work? Or this one? So the question here comes, who else is doing the same thing? So at my home, it's very likely that I am the guy that is going there and not many other people are going there because I live there. But in a place like a restaurant or um, or a workplace or a popular popular destination, uh, many people end at that same location. So because many other people are ending here at Science Park, it says this must be a place where you and other people are going very often, and you are going very, very often there, so it must be work. <laughs> so, so this kind of um, looking at frequencies and also other people's uh, frequencies. For instance, if I type here Passis ID, I didn't do it successfully. So Passi has been much more active than me. <laughs> this is just the last day, so it looks much more than my last year, <laughs> maybe here. Um, and he's in China now, so I have to go all the way here. But Here, uh, the workplace is also detected at the same location. I'm not sure what the favorite is, but the home is not there. For all of you who know this place, it is the uh, yeah, I can't put ice swimming place. <laughs> so <laughs> you could say that Passy lives there, but <laughs> I, I don't think it is uh, valid. <laughs> Even though he spends most of the time there, so yeah. Okay, so going back to Mopsy, I don't really know what else to say. There are many other features that, that we have. This searching is just like recommendation, but you also add here a keyword. So it's yeah, in our feature, get the feature that uh, there is a lot of uh, data analyzing uh, tools, what you're using with these. 
Yes. Uh, measurements. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, one, one idea that um, came up up my mind was that um, uh, we have a talking about semantic net, nets and uh, internet. Uh, why don't you use that kind of stuff if you try to get the titles? That there is the rules to put the title and uh, that kind of stuff to the net sites. Or was it was uh, was that was that kind of uh, um, imagining that that kind of stuff is coming? Did you I, get I, 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 point? I didn't understand. Let me try to see. So, do you mean that the websites should contain uh, meta information about what they are? Yeah. Well, that's the problem. They don't. So you would think that if you go to a web page and you check the HTML code and you see the title tag, you would think that in that title tag there is the title of the web page. Mm. But it's not. It turns out Nashla did this research and 5% of all the web pages have their title in the title tag. Be okay. Because it's something that doesn't really appear very obvious in the page. If you put it in or not, the page will look more or less the same. Uh, and automatic tools that be build web pages may not put it there uh, automatically. So people that are developing um, often don't have it there for one reason or, or another. Uh, so we don't rely on, on uh, information being already parsed in the proper way. There are many web pages that are very proper, very well written, but most of them are not. So it becomes a very tough question how to do it automatically yeah okay it's a bit more pressure nowadays because if you share a restaurant or, or a place in Facebook or uh, Google Plus or, or whatever um, if you don't have the proper tags the sharing might look bad like maybe it's not going to put a good picture there maybe the text is going to be something that you don't want to be there so then the developer thinks hey how do I change this so that it looks good on Facebook so the question doesn't become how to write a good web page but how to make Facebook understand what my website is it's still important for people uh, but um, it's kind of a silly silly way of uh, how, how the society works nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the motivation that many of them don't have the proper information. And the title is very often this kind of image which is very difficult to parse. Yeah. So it's embedded in this, uh, in this uh, logo. So you can ask any, any questions that comes to your mind about anything. Yeah, Mopsy has a lot of these very small things, particular research research topics embedded everywhere. Uh, many of them I don't even remember. And if I have to be honest, that's the reason why it's not very successful. So it's trying to do everything, but it's not doing anything better or far better than the others. So it's like this kind of super app that has uh, buses there, photos there, pictures there, services, uh, complicated web page analysis tools, uh, but it's not doing any of those things in a superior level. Um, part of them may be a little bit better, but because of this other additional functionality that many people don't need, they go to something specifically for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and one weapon, one reason can be that, that if there is the, in the uh, application interface that there is the KR and there is nothing to explain what is the KR, it's a stupid, stupid interface. Yeah, this this is yeah. the this is the second. You are talking about the second very big reason. Uh, we don't own a company uh, that is interested to get money out of the users. So this has been made with the research in mind, a little bit with usability because we are thinking about going to, to this uh, 
business world at some point. Uh, but the features need much more polishing. They are not user friendly, and many of them are hidden. Uh, many of them are hidden very well. <laughs> like this uh, drawing to search roots, it's saying here, but now the text is gone, and I have no idea that that feature even exists uh, unless I teach you about that. <laughs> so, wow! So, I mean, it's a very bad interface, and uh, it's probably one of the most um, um, useful tools that, that we would have that other people don't have yet. And the same with KR. It's such a small button there that uh, I'm sure that many people that do orienteering would like, like you said, to carry their phone around and then analyze their route on the map much more detailed than using uh, Google Maps or Satellite View or, or something. Uh, but they don't know that we offer such a feature because yeah. you would need to advertise it. You would need to put commercials out and tell people about it. And it's something that uh, takes a lot of effort. And it's not about knowing how to make a system, how to implement the, the application. It's about having the ability to spread the word and uh, make something popular. I'm not sure if I explained well. A lot of work should go to the interface and looking at the target audience because this Mopsy app is for everybody and at the same time it's for nobody. If you if you want to hear what I think so it's not clear who it is aimed for. And you can't have a catchy um, commercial about the product where you show all the features, all the 100 features that we have, because you will lose the people. Not everybody will be interested in that. Uh, the components should be clearly identified, and perhaps even the app should be split into multiple, like one as a sport tracker, B as a similar to TripAdvisor, or, or this kind of uh, finding out what is around. So, yeah, and bus bus application, which actually we are doing now, so Golam IT project is to extract the bus component from Mopsy and have it as a separate, uh, separate application. So let's see what that happens. But he only knows Android and very difficult to, to be on the market and taken seriously when you only have one mobile uh, support iPhone is really needed if, if you want to take it seriously also. So very different in, in uh, commercial uh, environment than the university environment. I would say it's very rare that the university service becomes popular just like that. It's, uh, most of the research doesn't go on how to make an effective system, but it goes on finding out what the users want. So most of the costs go analyzing your target audience and finding out who wants this service and what do they really want in, in practice if they want to have a, a company. Is this open platform? or? Oh, no, it's, it's not open source, but uh, uh, but we have many of uh, the tools, like for example, I was showing before this reduction, uh, we have API for that, so you, you can use part of the Mopsy tools to get this, uh, this root reduction, if you have a similar system, or um, the root similarity is also here. As an API, so if you go to this, uh, where we have these uh, research papers, in the paper we usually have links showing if we offer something for free, then uh, you can follow those links and, uh, and uh, check what we offer. So it's not open, but uh, the papers are 
describing exactly how the system works. So you should be able to implement a very similar system if you read all the all the papers. Uh, but the code itself is not not open source. Uh, and we have tools like this that, that give yeah. In the voting area, like, uh, is it possible to see any cameras? Cameras? Like, if we track the car, so there are uh, uh, cameras. Oh, um, no. So, do you mean that um, we actually don't offer a routing API? We don't have a routing API. So if you want to get directions from your answer to Coopia, for example, in Mopsy, you can't do that. So uh, I assume that's what you meant, that uh, can you get these uh, speed traps, yes. these uh, things when you do that? No, we, we have some system in Mopsy that does that, but it's a very basic, uh, it just uses Google uh, navigation <laughs> to the tools. So. I didn't even bother to show that. But basically, if you search for some, uh, some, uh, okay. Okay. Basically, if you search or, or get some recommendation nearby, we should have. I also haven't tested this for a long time. Uh, this check root button. It just gives you directions to the place, but this only calls the Google component, so... No, we don't have cameras. <laughs> uh, and it was never our intention to do. We have a little bit of the navigation that we are working on, so... Um, we are trying to build a tool that can navigate you. Um, for example, like this. So this, <laughs> this is very uh, unuseful. This is straight line navigation. It's not going to give you very good, um, good directions. Uh, here it's possible to use the OpenStreetMap uh, road network to get the navigation. This is more useful. And we also have something that doesn't work anymore. We are still, still working on it to to get it done. But the um, at the moment it's, it's not functional. We want to get navigations without the road network. We want to get navigations using the raw GPS trajectories. So, for example, if you look at this, my route collections here, I have some routes that are going to that location where I searched before, if I would put them together one after the other or cut them at different parts. So I would like to find a way how to get navigation using these, these routes without the road network at the bottom. And you might ask why is that even useful? Because it's not. I mean, it doesn't seem to be Google is using a road network, OpenStreetMap is using a road network. Why would I need a road network? But if you look at places like this where PASI has been doing orienteering, there are no roads there. So that there, is no, there is no road there. But you might still ask the question, I am here and I need to get here. And Google will tell you, well, go to this road and go around here, and then here you have to walk because there is no, no road there. But we could say something like, follow this, this path until you reach this point here, and then continue to follow this path here till the end. So without having a road network implemented, but just looking at different trajectories, we want to do some kind of navigation navigation instructions. Yeah, but th then you need to put the rubbers <laughs> rubbers <laughs> part of the yeah. 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 Boots, rubber, rubber boots. Yes, well this is not meant for, me meant for the common user, but uh, in Finland you know that forestry is very important. Mm. 
And yeah. some, some, sometimes people have to go and measure how tall trees are and how wide trees are and they might want to go very quickly to some place and uh, they could benefit from Passi's uh, jogging history, assuming he knows what he's doing.